Okay, welcome back. We are continuing this picture of Kovu today. Uh, this will be the last day of it, obviously. Because uh, it's almost done as it is. And that's perfect. So, we are going to create another layer. I'm not really showing you guys like how to do this. I'm just rambling while we do it. Because I want to give you guys something fun. I don't know if I used light. No, I didn't use highlighting, so that's good. Uh, we'll use this for shading. We'll do some shading markings. Right now I'm just going to do like a silly thing to show where I want the shading to go. And then we'll make it look nice after. Kind of thing. Uh... We can click to layer below. After I taught you guys to do that, and then I'm not even doing it. Okay. Would be a perfect time for when it's used. That should be good. I'll do the... I'll figure out, like, the eyes and stuff like that later. And around the eyes, that's easy enough to do. I just want to see where the shadows were going to go. Um, I guess I can do it now because I kind of need to do it with the main. So this will be shadow in here but not that part there. No, I don't need that. And then we'll go up to there. So that's part of that. But not that, so I'll just get rid of just so I'm not confused later on. Next that. Hopefully I won't be too confused later <laughs> with that stuff. So now we'll get the shading done. I like shading pixel stuff. It's fun. I like all the pixel things. I don't know about you guys, but it's just it's relaxing to me. Relaxing to just do pixel stuff. Okay, so that's our first little spot. And the only thing about this that I don't like as much is... Um, is like how long it can take and it's kind of boring if you're just listening to me ramble. Like, I'll do this while I'm watching, like, a video on YouTube or something like that. But this is the video on YouTube that you guys are watching. So, it's kind of like, uh, what do I do? Now, I could put on, and I might do it for this, if you guys want. Not that you guys have a choice, because you're not watching this live. Um, but I might just put on King's Quest VI. We did it in one of my other videos where I played through King's Quest VI and I made it so you guys could hear like I, I looked at things and stuff like that so it kind of gave a good idea of things going on in it so it still had like the story without it being so game-like and I cut out like a lot of the dead space in between where like you're walking from one area to another or things that just don't make sense if you're not watching it I might do that again with this. Just while I do this part here, I'm going to talk to you guys, but I just want to let you guys know if that's not something you really want to watch, you guys can kind of, if you still want to watch this uh, right now, kind of click away for a second and, uh, and search for a video that you guys want to watch or listen to anyways, not watch some music or, uh, some other video or whatever. Something that you just want to listen to. If you don't want to watch that. And then you can just put that on the background and watch this. And that way I can also speed it up to a little bit. If needed. But I want to give you guys fair warning. Just because I don't have a whole lot of interesting things to say. You know? I'm kind of a boring person. Um, so far things are going good with my time off. 
Uh, I'm looking forward to going away. Uh, this video may come out while I'm away? I don't know. Uh, I'll see what my schedule is like on posting videos, and I'll see what I can do about putting it up before I go away. And then I want to do like a speed paint of this. That will happen. Oops, this can go up to here. Um, oh yeah, I want to do a speed paint of this so you guys can see it fast if you don't want to sit here and listen to me, which is totally understandable, I get it. I don't always have interesting things to say. Now, I might do a video when I get back and tell you guys about my trip or something, but it'll just depend. It'll depend how much I want to tell, because there are things I don't want to say about everything that we're doing while we're there. Oops. And there are things that I'm very excited to share anything of about going. But it's going to be for two weeks. I'm going to be gone for about two weeks. And I am super, super excited about it. I know you guys don't really care that I'm going away on holiday, but I do. It's been a long, long time. Because I didn't go away. We were planning this trip back in 2018. So back then, like, COVID wasn't even the problem. It was just money that was the problem. And this time I was like, screw it, we're going. I don't care. We don't have the money, we don't have the money. We'll just find a way. So that's the plan. I'm just going to get rid of all these little spots here that don't... That are not needed. I'm going to actually do a little bit more of stuff and then we're going to go into... Then I'll do the King's Quest 6 thing with you guys. You guys can listen to more of that. Um, it's a really good game. Uh, a lot of people, out of all the King's Quest games, a lot of people consider that one to be the best one. It is certainly best for what we're doing it for. Like, with listening to it this way. Because... It's just, I don't know, I find it to be really... Um, like, it really works really well when I'm doing, like, just sound, and you guys can't see the picture. I feel like you still have a bit of the story happening, and it's easy to listen to that way. So, if you guys want to, it's sort of like listening to an audio novel kind of thing, if you want. Uh, it will be coming up shortly. I just want to get this part done. So about as far up as I'm going to go. And then we'll do it. I'll make sure my I was recording myself. But then that also allows me to make make something to eat and, and eat it while you guys watch this. That's probably good enough. Zoom out a little bit so I can see. So with this little spot here, that's also going to be a darker pixel, I think, isn't it? No, it's not. It's a light pixel. Okay, well. So yeah. Let's get started into King's Quest VI. Like I said, if you guys don't want to watch this, uh, put, put something else on so you guys can still enjoy, if you want to still enjoy this, but don't want to... Oops. But don't want to listen to King's Quest VI. Um, if you can, try to give it a chance. Might to kind of be a little more smooth heading up. Um, because I think it'd be good, so. It's sort of like listening to an audio novel, and we'll get started. Unfortunately, if you guys didn't watch the first one, you might be a little lost, uh, but basically Prince Alexander is looking for, uh, or trying to get to see Princess Cosima. She He starts learning that she's in trouble, and he needs to get to her to, to talk to her even. He can't even communicate with her at this moment. 
but we'll continue from here. If you guys want to watch the actual video of King's Quest VI that I did, I'll put that like up in the top corner for the part that we're starting at now, and you guys can watch from there. So uh, I'll be back at the end of this video just to talk to you guys real quick, but right now, for now until we're done, probably it'll be King's Quest VI, so enjoy. The pawn shop is a dimly lit place with a slightly musty smell. Curiosities litter every corner and every shelf. For sale are articles that range from the bizarre to the commonplace, from the priceless to the practical. The pawn shop owner is a mysterious fellow. His face is old and inscrutable, and there's a glint of sheer iron in his gaze. Still, Alexander senses this is someone he can trust. How fare you, good merchant? I could use more business, if the truth be known. The mechanical nightingale is made of tin painted dreary shades of brown to match the coloring of a real nightingale. A small key emerges from its back. The magic map is made of thin leather and has lifelike drawings of the islands on its uneven surface. The rabbit's foot has long, soft fur. This is the only page of inventory. An elegant little glass dish decorates the countertop. The dish is full of green mints offered for the enjoyment of the customer. Alexander takes a mint. Alexander eats the mint. Hmm. Not bad. A little stale, perhaps. Alexander takes a mint. Alexander is standing on a sunny village street. There are open shops to his right, a hard-packed path beneath his feet, and palm trees waving over his head. To the north, a key-shaped arch leads to another part of the village. The sign above the door says, Ali's Books. Hello. I will be right up. Now, what can I do for you? Alexander is standing in a cozy little shop. Books of every size and shape line the walls. A crackling fire in the fireplace completes the tranquil scene. The bookshop owner is a thin, middle-aged man. His intelligent eyes are slightly blurry from long nights spent reading by candlelight. There's a small table near the door that bears a sign. The sign has undergone a number of changes. It once read, 10 pence, but that was crossed out and replaced with 5 pence, then 1 pence, then free. The sign currently reads, take one, please. Only one book remains on the table. It looks like the bookshop owner really wants to get rid of that book. Alexander picks up the book from the small table. Oh yes, please take that book. You have my most humble thanks for doing so good, sir. Really? Thanks! A large round pot is one of the pottery pieces on display outside the shops. Alexander sorts through the odds and ends that the pawn shop owner dumped into the pot. Magic exploding gum wrappers, a shattered crystal ball, a cracked wand, a fake thumb. Hmm. Near the bottom, Alexander finds a little glass bottle labeled ink. It appears to be empty, but Alexander decides to take it anyway. You never know when a small bottle will come in handy.
the beach is covered with a fine-grained white sand. The sky is sunny and clear. A few white clouds accent the bright blue. The ocean appears calm, but there's a dimpling pattern to the surface which indicates an undertow. Alexander pulls out his magic map. The magic map lays out what Alexander assumes is the whole of the land of the Green Isles. The distinctive islands are separated from each other by the deadly sea. A large island named the Isle of the Sacred Mountain dominates the north of the land of the Green Isles. Alexander feels a strange pulling sensation. Alexander is standing on the small sandy cove of a rocky island. Around him, sheer granite cliffs block any further movement north, east, or west. To the south, he is blocked by the sea. There's an ugly flower growing near the base of the cliff. Alexander picks the flower and is startled by its hideously strong, skunk-like odor. For a moment, he can smell nothing else. Alexander notices an unusually large, coal-black feather lying on the beach. Alexander takes the feather. Alexander pulls out his magic map. According to the magic map, the Isle of Wonder is a comma-shaped island poised in the sea to the west. Alexander feels a strange pulling sensation. Alexander is standing on a rocky beach. To the north is dense tropical vegetation. Near the shore are a dozen or so oyster beds. Why aren't you asleep like the other oysters? Oh, I'm so weary, but I can't sleep. I have a terrible ache in my mouth. If you're having trouble sleeping, perhaps you'd like me to read to you. Two dulcimers raised to the degree of forty half dulcimers, divided into equal parts by the third of a cackle of grouse geese, put over the result of ten fine mackles, albeit small fine mackles, stretched over the total of fifty-three and an eighth bottles of wild beast lard. Alexander makes a grab for the pearl. Ah, the little oyster drifts into peaceful slumber with the rest of his oyster friends. Alexander hears someone coming. I fear scars of the isle we be. Watch for a foreign man, said he, with ears and nose, tongue, hands, and eyes. Its nature cannot be disguised. If man it be, then man it dies. Old Tom Troll, smell your smell. Do that which you do so well. Alexander holds the flower of stench out to the gnome with the jumbo nose. Tom Troll I am, that's all I'll be. My nose knows all on land and sea. A flower of stench has washed ashore. A flower tis all and nothing more. Listen, hark you, Grovenor. Do your duty as you soar. With your ears, please tell us more.
Alexander winds the tin nightingale and plays it for the gnome with the monumental ears. A nose is not a way to spy. My ears cannot be told a lie. A nightingale is all there be. No man is near, and so say me. Taste, Grump Trump, that we might know whether friend or whether foe. Alexander holds the mint out for the gnome with the gigantic mouth. Grump Frump knows a tasty treat. It matters not what others bleat. No danger is this one so sweet. Trilly Dilly, use your hands. Is it beast or is it man? Alexander holds the rabbit foot out for the gnome with the huge hands. Behold, you mad! What aileth thee? A bunny can't trill merrily. A hare does not at all taste sweet. A rabbit here is all we greet. Old Bill Batter, never fatter. Vision can resolve this matter. Look you now and end this chatter. Alexander pours the contents of the empty-looking ink bottle over himself. By all that's beauteous, fair, and sightly, four morons do I sleep with nightly. There's nothing there at all, I say. Enough of this. Let's now away. Alexander did it! He's fooled the guards! Alexander pulls out his magic map. The Isle of the Crown lies at the south of the map. Alexander feels a strange pulling sensation. The path splits here, forming a crossroads. One branch heads northeast towards a distant castle, and one leads northwest into a small village. A grand old tree stretches its luxurious limbs out over the crossroads. A nightingale perches on a high branch of the tree. She sings the most beautiful song Alexander has ever heard. Alexander winds the mechanical nightingale and places it on the ground. The mechanical nightingale sings a sweet, tinny tune. The real nightingale in the tree cocks her head and listens intently. The nightingale flies to a lower branch and looks at Alexander curiously, as if she were deciding that this human might not be so bad. Hello, little nightingale. Of what do you sing? The nightingale only looks at Alexander curiously and continues to sing. Hmm. Alexander doesn't remember that sign being on the wall before. He decides to take a closer look. It's a proclamation. It reads, Citizens Rejoice, announcing the royal wedding and coronation of Wazir Abdul Al-Hazred and Princess Kasima. For reasons of security, the wedding will not be open to the public. Long live the new king and queen of the land of the Green Isles. Alexander feels his stomach turn at the thought of the dread event. 
If he doesn't do something soon, Cosima will be another man's wife. The sign above the door says, Ali's Books. Jalo, how fare you? And what news have you from the castle? Prince Alex, how I fare is close to boiling. Have you seen the wedding proclamations around the village? I've heard rumors of the wedding, of course, but I didn't want to believe it, and I never thought it would be so soon. Cosima, married. Oh, it is an unpleasant thing to swallow, friend. If only I knew Cosima wished it. Tell me about the Wazir, Jalo. The Wazir? <laughs> now there's a dangerous subject. His name is Abdul Al-Hazred. He came to the kingdom 15 years ago. The king was fascinated by his knowledge and his fine-sounding ideas. It didn't take long for Al-Hazred to convince the king to trust him with the minor problems of daily government. You see, Kelefim had a wife and a new daughter he wanted to spend time with. Al-Hazred became Wazir. And now? Well, he's had his eye on Kasima ever since she was a young girl. And she is the only thing between him and the throne. Do you think he means to harm her? Oh, I honestly don't know. I think he'd rather keep her as wife. But whatever his plans for the princess, he will use her to his best advantage. That's his way. Perhaps he has charmed her. Perhaps she cares for him now. The Wazir is capable of anything. And Kasima must be vulnerable and lonely right now. Still, she has always instinctively distrusted him. Kasima has a good head on her shoulders. I'd be surprised if she's truly fallen for his words of love. I must return to the castle, Prince Alex, and you to your wanderings. May we both farewell. Volumes of poetry are on display on this bookshelf. Thinking of Cosima, Alexander decides to leaf through one of the volumes of love poetry. He reads, Thy hair, thy lips, thy beauteous face, and all thy studied female grace have won for thee anon a place within this broken breast. Not bad. And another. Upon the shore the lilies bend, untouched by worldly care, where shadow they her earthly bed, oh, that she were not there. Yikes! And another. What was it when I looked at you? What power has chained me through and through, and binds my heart with links so tight I cannot live without the sight of you? What nameless thing has captured me, and made me powerless to flee? What thing is it without a name that brings my mind e'er back the same to thee? The name of love cannot apply. Its commonness does not decry the haunted, hunted, painful cry that my heart makes for you, that e'er my soul eternal makes for you. Hmm. A little close to home, that one. Alexander returns the love poem book to the shelf. A page has fallen from the poem book and now lies on the floor. Alexander picks up the fallen page. It's the love poem he particularly liked. It must have fallen out of the poetry book. I see that old volume has lost another page. You may keep it if you like, sir. I have glued the stubborn thing back in place two times already. I do rather like it. Thank you, merchant. The sign says, Pawn Shop. Your candy dish is empty! I am sorry, sir, but I have no more mints. Somebody has eaten them all. Well, get some more, then! I fear that is impossible. Without the ferry, I can no longer get imports from the other islands, and we do not grow mint extract on the Isle of the Crown. Oh, I hate not getting what I want!
How fare you, good merchant? Thankfully, I fare better than my business. My shop is as silent as the moon these days. <laughs> Would you mind if I traded this in? Of course, Prince Alex. Please, choose something in exchange for the items on the counter. Alexander looks closely at the items on the counter to make his selection. A plain wooden flute is displayed on the counter. I'll take the flute. The flute? Very good, Prince Alex. May its music always be sweet. Feel free to trade it back at any time. Thank you. I found this large pearl. Might it be valuable enough to ransom back my family ring? I have never seen such a perfect pearl. Certainly you can have your ring back. Oh, I'm glad you didn't sell it. I'm a bit attached to it, I'm afraid. Of course you are. You would be cold-hearted if you felt any differently. I am happy to see a family heirloom back with its rightful owner. Alexander's ring is made of the purest gold and has the insignia of the royal family of Daventry on its face. Alexander holds out his insignia ring to the Nightingale, hoping she perhaps is the Nightingale that Jalo spoke of, and that she might be able to take the ring to Cosima. The ring is the one thing he has that might alert Cosima to his presence on the Isles. The Nightingale swoops down and grabs the ring. She flies off towards the castle. Perhaps to Cosima? Sing Sing, what have you got in your mouth, my pretty? A gold ring? <gasps> sing Sing, where did you get this? Realm of Daventry. But this is Alexander's ring. Oh, my soul, he must be here. Sing Sing, I wish you could tell me what you've seen. Is he really here, then, on this very island? Oh, if only I could leave this castle as easily as you. Take this ribbon, Sing Sing. If you know where he is, return it to him. Please be careful, Alexander. It is so dangerous, and yet I could not wish you away. The little bird makes a delivery. The nightingale has dropped a bit of red velvet on the ground. It's a red velvet hair ribbon. Could it be? Could it possibly belong to Cosima herself? Or am I merely wishing it were so? Oh. Alexander examines the red ribbon and finds a strand of long black hair. Alexander has a love poem from a book in the bookshop. Alexander holds out the love poem, hoping that the bird will deliver it to the same place she took the ring, in the chance that the receiver might truly be Cosima. The nightingale swoops down, grabs the love poem, and takes it towards the castle. Sing, sing, my sweet. You bring another present. Let me see. It is a poem, Sing, sing. What was it when I looked at you? What power has chained me through and through and binds my heart with links so tight I cannot live without the sight of you? Oh, Alexander. I was hoping he'd return to you. Take this to him while he waits. Hurry, my fleet one! The little bird makes a delivery. The nightingale has dropped a bit of paper on the ground. It's a note. Dearest Alexander, I cannot believe you are here, my friend. 
Please, please be careful. Abdul isn't about to let anyone interfere with his plans. Watch out for Abdul's genie, Alexander, and do not do anything rash. I am not without resources, and I will prevail if I can only find some small means of defense. Do nothing to try to get to me. You must not be endangered again for my sake. Greatly in your family's debt, Kasima. Alexander's hand trembles as he reads the note. For the first time in his long search, he has heard her voice again, if only in writing. No words of love, only friendly concern. Friend. Is the maiden merely shy, or does she regard him only as a brother? Alexander pulls out his magic map. According to the magic map, the Isle of Wonder is a comma-shaped island poised in the sea to the west. Alexander feels a strange pulling sensation. Alexander is standing in a delectable garden. Nestled in the bright green grass are colorful plants growing in orderly clusters. Some of their curious faces peer up at Alexander from the sides of the path. The garden ends at a speckled gate. The wallflowers look terribly shy. There appears to be a hole in the garden wall. Through the hole in the wall, Alexander sees a land that resembles a giant chessboard. Wow, it really is a hole in the wall. Zounds! Those wallflowers sure are shy, and the snapdragons are awfully protective of them. Alexander can't even get close to the wallflowers without causing quite a stir. May I have this dance? Alexander stops playing the flute, but the wallflowers and snapdragons continue to dance, caught up in the music and oblivious to everything around them.